everybody, it's Lori. Welcome to my studio. I'm so glad you stopped by. What a beautiful day it is today here where I live. It's October, beginning of October, but it's the third day in a row that we're going to be in the 70s in bright sunshine. And um, I know there's a lot of people around the world, even close by where I live, that are having major, major weather situations. Um, Wow, it's just crazy what I have seen on the news. But anyway, I didn't didn't intend to talk about the weather today, um, even though it is there's a lot to talk about there. Anyways, <laughs> um, today's painting is going to be a lot of layers, and it was a lot of fun to do. It really, I had so much fun with it. And again, I just kind of got lost in the painting and didn't know where I was going to end up. But I started out with some blue and some green in the background, but I wanted it really muted and washed out like watercolors. And I think I achieved that. I don't know if much of it shows at the end of this video, but there's a little bit. <laughs> Hang on till the end and see what I mean and see what it ends up looking like. Um, there's a lot of surprises that surprised me too as to far as, as far as what I ended up doing with this canvas. Um, it's a 10 by 20 canvas. I like working on those. I don't know why, but I just do. They, um, they're different. They're fun. They have a shape of their own that just kind of starts the whole process off in a way that, I don't know makes me feel more creative for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do today with my painting. Um, I may try starting doing some different things again uh, going forward. I always like to do different things when I'm painting. I don't stick with the same thing for very long, although I just start getting to the point where I'm really liking the paintings that I'm doing and the style that I'm doing. And then I change it up a little bit more because um, you know, I think you get better at, at what you're doing and your style of painting as you go. And you just want to keep adding more and expanding more. At least that's the way I feel. Um, I, I've been a lifelong student. So anyway, always, I am always trying to expand in my knowledge and my energies and you know, everything, um, and improving who I am. It doesn't seem like it's worth it to hang out here on this planet if you're not going to continue to grow. Um, because it's just, what's, what's the point? I've seen some people in life that they just get settled into a routine and then that's all they do. Um, get up, go to work Monday through Friday, come home, have dinner, and go to bed and on the weekends they maintain their property and don't even take the time to enjoy anything you know it's just you work to pay the bills and i i just i don't know i know that life is that way sometimes but it doesn't have to be and i think that's changing now i think that younger people are are finding that they just are not going to come and settle for that they're, they're not going to, and I don't blame them. I know my kids aren't settling for that. They just are not going to go to work every day and not do what they love or um, feel like they're making a difference and expanding themselves as they go along. Um, it's interesting to watch all of them, um, mine and my partners. Uh, we both have different children. Well, they're not children anymore. They're all adults now. The youngest just started college this year <laughs> and the oldest just had her second baby. Yeah. Well, she had, it was actually her first birth, but it's their second baby. Her wife had the first one, carried the first one. So this is, even though it's her second child to care for. So she's more confident and comfortable with that. It's the first time she's been through the birthing process and the nursing. And it's just, it's been an experience to watch her grow and expand through that. Um, she's a daycare 
provider. She has a daycare center in her basement. It's more like a preschool, really, but she takes kids from birth up. So she has a lot of different ages, including her own. So I was in grandma call for this one when, it came, when she came, this baby, because uh, my her other daughter, my three, the three-year-old granddaughter, she needed somebody to stay with her while um, her mommies were at the hospital and, and doing what they needed to do to bring this new life into the world. And so I got to spend a lot of really quality time with my granddaughter, just the two of us, and it was really pretty special and to be there when my only daughter gave birth was just, well, I wasn't actually at the hospital, but I was there with them. They lived a couple hours away from me, and it was just the most exciting experience, most exciting experience ever, and um, it was such a joy, a joyful time. And that was last week. It was last Sunday, and um, today is like the other end of the spectrum. Well, not exactly because, but close. My sister, I uh, if you've been listening regularly, you know that her dog has been sick, and um, she's fifteen. Her little, her little girl, her little doggy. Well, she's not really little, but anyway, <laughs> she's um, had kidney failure for a couple of years now, and she actually had she's had trouble with kidneys. She's been in kidney failure for a few months, and they've actually done what they consider to be doggy dialysis. But she stopped eating, really is not really drinking much and, um, this past week, week and a half. And she is, anyway, today's the day to take her into the vet. And I'm going to go up to them. They live an hour away. And I'm going to be there with my mom and my sister today with my partner. He and I are going to, um, you know, be support people. Um, we are both very close with this little doggy too. So it's a hard day. Um, and it got me thinking this morning that about the times that I've been with other beings that have passed into their next or from this life. Let's put it that way, because I don't think it's really their next. I think they're going home. That's what my belief is. Um, but they've passed from this life into and, and, and shed their body. They don't really go anywhere though. And that brings me to really what I kind of wanted to talk about feeling energy. Um, I've been with another dog when, when she passed and three different people in hospice. Um, and it's just, you, your body has to feel the pain of it. You know, our human bodies have, we have to feel and allow ourselves to feel the pain of the, what we consider the loss. And it is because they're losing their, their physical bodies here, but they really don't go anywhere. Um, I guess it was my dad that I really noticed it with that. I felt like he was around me more after he left his body than he was before because, well, I don't know. There's a lot of reasons why I suppose he had dementia. And so he was checking out quite often with that. Um, so he wasn't really always there with me when I was with him and I was helping to care for him. I had moved in with he and his wife and, and was helping to care for him. Um, but yeah, when it was the energy, his energy that I felt and my brother too. My brother talked to me after he left his body pretty much right away. Um, I could feel him wrap himself around me and just the love that was coming from him. It was just 
amazing. And um, yeah, it's really pretty cool. But anyway, I, I, I don't want to get you guys all depressed or get you, I just was thinking about it and remembering, you know, I have come to peace with, with their passing and, um, cause I know they're still around. I know they are. My brother likes to play with the lights. <laughs> anyway, um, but feeling energy, I don't know if you are one that feels energy knowingly but we all do feel the energy around us because we are energy we are made of energy most of our bodies are energy the part of our bodies that are actually physical cells with substance i guess is the word to use if you take away all the space in between all of these cells with the substance and even inside the cells, there's a lot of space in the cells. Um, if you take that all away, we can fit in a teeny tiny little area, teeny tiny little area, um, just like small. <laughs> there's more space to us than anything, which is kind of amazing that we perceive ourselves as being solid. Um, and that's, that's the case with, not just us, but everything, everything in the physical world here that we live in. Um, I am not a scientist. However, I love science and I just love to listen to people who are scientists and their podcasts and um, especially the scientists who are listening to science and bringing science and spirituality together because there is proof in science now that spirituality and our energy is real. It's definitely, there's no question about it. Um, quantum physics is a huge, a huge thing when it comes to that. If um, you're interested in some of that, um, you can listen to different people either. I, I, I was introduced to a lot of these scientists that I, listen to on Gaia TV. Um, I talked about that. I think it was the last video that, um, streaming service and it's everything spiritual, everything spiritual from, from source energy to, and to science to, um, UFOs or UAPs as they call them now. Um, everything spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool streaming service, but there, the, everybody wants to get the word out. It's, it's that time. So there's so many people out there that are making their, their message easier to reach, easier to find. You will find podcasts that these people have on a regular basis, even on YouTube. I mean, you'll, You'll find them on YouTube. Even you don't have to go to different podcast channels in order or apps in order to get them. But try looking for Dr. Bruce Lipton. He's um, really big on epigenetics and has been. If you don't know what epigenetics are, check him out because it's really kind of interesting how we and our energy can control. We are the control of what cells and what genetics turn on and off, stay turned off. And everything that we do with our bodies, everything that happens to our bodies, illnesses and whatnot, they are all, they're, they're, um, it's not about just what's given to us from our parents and our ancestors and our family. Those genes may be in our bodies, but anyways, they don't have to turn on. Um, and there's um, Greg Braden. He's awesome. He's got so much information that it's just crazy. He's, um, he's a scientist in many different areas, but just, just coolness, coolness, coolness. Dr. Joe Dispenza. That's another one that I love. He is um, got the the brain and the spirituality 
and how they work together figured out pretty well. <laughs> um, oh, there's just, just so many. Search um, Gaia on YouTube even because you'll see not maybe their whole series on YouTube, but you'll see bits and pieces. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, you know, then you can subscribe to Gaia or whatever you want to do. Or just check out and see, you know, you'll get some really cool information if you're interested in that kind of thing. Anyways, um, so I have learned a lot about energy and not just in the spiritual way, but in the scientific way. Um, we all feel it and we all, I, I, I don't know if you notice it in your life or not, but let's talk about some of the ways that you might feel it. Energy, intuition, women's intuition. I don't know if you're as old as I am or not, but <laughs> even if you're not, you may have heard of that. Um, it used to be called women's intuition, and that was when women tended to know things, especially even about their kids, the connection between them and their children. And um, nowadays, I think it's more everybody. It's not just women. But in back in the, when I was a kid in the 60s, you know, the men were supposed to just go to work and be strong for the family. And they didn't have to show their feelings. And so they didn't really connect with their energy as much. But it started changing around then, too, to a point. And now it's just, it's everybody. It's men, women, any gender that you choose to be, I guess. <laughs> the way the world is today. You can choose to be any gender you want. And if there isn't one for you, you can make one up for yourself that fits you. Which is, I don't know, I guess that's okay. Um, um Of course it's okay. It, it's definitely okay. It doesn't mean that, I think we, never mind. I'm not even going to go into that. But um, your intuition is you're reading energy around you because you can feel the energy off of the other people. You can feel the energy in the words of your guides and your angels and, um, you know, God, source energy, or whatever you want to call it. Um I call it God again now, but I didn't for a while only because, you know, and you'll see it, if it bothers you that people don't call that energy God, just to explain why many people don't, and they call it source energy or, or the universe or whatever else other term is because God has a lot attached to that word that isn't really, you know, where person may be they may not think god is judgment and and rules and deciding whether you're going to heaven or hell um you know all the stuff that the major religions in the past used to teach i'm guessing there still are some out there that do but anyway um only because you know, I don't know. That's a subject for another day, I guess. But just to kind of understand, that's why it's not that we take anything away from the name of God um, as far as the power and the creation and all of that. It's just to give you an idea that maybe to look at God in a different light and to listen to what Jesus said about God. Because um, Jesus was a, the best mystic. I mean, he, he's one of the Sunday masters that just, yeah, he had it figured out. And he was teach, trying to teach us about it. And a lot of his word has been misconstrued. However, I think that's why he talked in parables myself. That's my thought. Because he was able to, wherever we were at in our own growth, in our own vibration, we could hear his word in a different light, a little bit of a different light based on our own vibration because we're all here to learn and be in the earth school here 
um, different things about the vibrations and how they work. Anyway, um, but intuition is it's that, that feeling, you know, you feel like, I don't know, this person or that person or it just doesn't feel right to me. This, there's this, this, you're offered a job and it just doesn't feel right. Even though it, they've made it sound like it's all wonderful, it doesn't feel right for you. It just doesn't feel good. Um right inside your gut, that gut feeling, um, you can feel it and pay attention to that because that is all that energy trying to guide you into possibly the right path. Um, sit with it for a while, maybe if you can, with those decisions that don't necessarily feel right. You know, and what I mean by sitting with it is either meditating on it or talking to someone important in your life about it, your partner, for example, your kids, whatever, your parents, um, meditate on it and just, you know, maybe don't have any music on or anything when you're painting, which is a good way. And just let the thoughts flow in, in your mind with whatever comes to you. Um, and see what you get. See what thoughts come into your mind. It's, um, a lot of times they're not your own and you, you just, you're feeling it from and hearing it from beyond your own physical self here, which may be your higher self, you know, the part of you that is still in the spiritual world and knows more about what your plan was when you came into this earth plane, this earth school, um, or from your guides who are always with you to help guide you on the right path. Um, God, the universe, spirit. And, um, you know, it's all like Jesus said, it's, we are all one body. We're all part of the whole. We are all part of the whole, so we can hear from the entire whole, you know. We hear these messages and these guides, guidance from the angels, from anywhere that feels comfortable to you. You're, you're hearing from them. You know, Jesus went into, I, I talk about Jesus a lot. It's probably one of the, it, 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 I think it is the most popular religion in this country in here in the United States, um, and possibly around the world, I believe. But even if it's not Jesus, if it's whatever ascended master that you have connected with, um, Buddha, um, whatever ascended master, it doesn't matter. They're all they're all around to help us on this path here on this planet. But you're hearing from them all anyways, from whoever you decide you want to hear from. It doesn't mean that you're worshiping all of these other thing, beings like the angels or, or the saints or whatever. You're not worshiping. So if you're concerned about that, and you're, it's just you're listening because they're there to help. Um, anyway, I feel like I'm babbling right now. But back to feeling the energy. Um, have you ever walked into a room and you can feel that there's tension in the room even before you see any people's faces or anything? Um, because maybe there's been an argument in that room before you got there. And you can feel that negative energy, that tension in there. Um, or as you're driving to go someplace that you go off and then you go take the same route every day and for one reason or another you don't know why but you just feel like going a different way this time today just you you want to make this turn and go that way even though it may take another minute or two to get where you're going go ahead and follow that intuition it may keep you out of somebody some trouble that's that may happen ahead of you um a car accident or i don't know um traffic jam or anything, you know, that might be 
not be to your best interest. So I, I do that all the time. And um, that's one of the ways that I um, have learned my way around where I live now because I've only lived here for about three years. I moved here during 2020 during the big pandemic. And so, you know, I didn't go out much for the first year because <laughs> we couldn't, we were supposed to shelter in place. So, yeah, anyway, um, but I've learned my way around pretty well by doing that, taking a different turn here or there. I always have my phone on me and my GPS is available so that if I do misplace where I am, I can always turn it on and say, okay, how do I get to such and such? And you don't have to worry about getting lost and ending up like across the country or anything anymore. <laughs> but anyway, um, some people, I don't know if you've ever had anybody tell you that you are good at reading people. You can tell if people are being honest or not just by the way it feels to you. Yeah, it's your, your feeling their energy. You can, it's just, you're feeling their mood or whatever it is. If you're really sensitive to the way people, you know, you can say, even though somebody's saying, oh, I'm good, good. How are you? You, know, you can say, wait a minute, something's off here with you in your head. So, you, you know, you say, are you sure you're okay? What's going on? You know, a mother with her children is especially that way. Um, or with someone that you know very well, or even with people you don't know very well. It's just all feeling energy. And it's our way of, um, it's like a guidance. It's like our GPS for this physical realm. Take note, pay attention. It's really pretty cool when you do. Um, you can start, if you don't you normally do this, you can just start simply with something like listening to that little voice in your head um, when you're going off to work in the morning. That's how I started with this years ago. And I said, okay, I'm going to listen to that little voice and pay attention. You know, it just says the sun may be out right now. And, and all of a sudden you have the urge to pick up your umbrella and you're like, why am I doing that? The sun's shining. I'm going to leave it here. And then you end up getting caught in the rain later in the day. If you remember those things, those little urges, you know, of like, I used to work on my feet a lot. And um, when I was an educator in the corporate world and even in schools, the elementary schools and stuff, but, um, and I was, had the urge to take another pair of shoes. If I, I, I found out, I paid attention. And if I didn't bring that other pair of shoes, I ended up su suffering with the foot pain that day for whatever reason, something that just happened in foot pain happened. Did I talk myself into foot pain? Maybe, I don't know. Um, but I sure didn't create the rain when I didn't bring my umbrella. <laughs> but it, if you start paying attention, you realize that these are little intuitive messages and it's just kind of cool. I, I would smile and now it's just become na natural nature to me. If I don't bring something, I'm going, I'm, when they tell me to bring it with me, then I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it. And that happens pretty much every time, every time. Um, as you can tell, my family, my children and my mom and sister, they all live a little distance from me. So when I go to see them, it's a day at least, if not a few days that I go. Um, so it's when I'm packing up for the, for the trip and for whatever reason, something unusual comes into my mind and says, you know, what about this? Bring this. And I better listen because I'm going to wish I did. And then I'm going to either have to find a way to get to the store and buy that item that I didn't bring, or I'm going to have to suffer for whatever reason without it. And you know what? If sometimes you pay attention to one that might have come into your mind on your own and it's not really something you need, so what? So what? At least you're prepared. You know, always be prepared. That's what my Girl Scout motto was when I was a kid. <laughs> I guess that stuck with me through life, too. But um, 
yeah feeling energy is pretty interesting um some of us feel it in our skin some of us can see it some of us can hear it once you get better at it at recognizing it or you have if you're having a if you have a gift of some sort that you can see or hear or smell um i know my dad would often come visit when he'd come visit me i would smell c- cigarette smoke and there's a long story to that but i always knew it was him when i smelled cigarette smoke when i shouldn't like driving in my car by myself with the windows closed yeah that was, it would smell like the car was filling with cigarette smoke and there was no reason for it um that kind of thing and you may not actually see energy see people or you may see people if you have that kind of a gift um that are sentience and it's nothing to be afraid of everything's good it's just really interesting to start paying attention and noticing these things and saying okay you know what what is this about oftentimes they will come in dreams and that's another thing you can do is start writing down keep a pad and paper next to your bed and when you have a dream and wake up write it down right away because you know how they are they fade away those dreams um and it may be really bizarre and it may not feel like it's making any sense at all and it may be like that's I'm not going to bother writing that down. That doesn't mean anything. It's just stupid or silly or whatever. But you look back at it, if you do write it down, you can look back at it a month or two later and it's like, oh my gosh, I understand that now. It makes perfect sense to me. And it's really interesting to read back at those dream journals. And I don't know. It's just, you, you'll, you'll, I think you'll find and be surprised at the things that are being said to you and being told to you that you don't even realize now when you're not paying attention and hopefully you've been listening and most of us do without even realizing it not consciously but if you start listening consciously then it's going to grow even bigger and better and you'll be able to understand what these messages are and you'll get more of them because you'll be paying attention and your guides will be going, yay, finally she's paying attention or he's paying attention to what I'm trying to say. Oh, yay, I'm so glad. I'm so excited because now we can get somewhere (laughs) Um, because they really want to help you. And if you don't listen when it's subtle, it's just going to, they're just going to say it louder and louder and louder until you do that's that and you can avoid a lot of trouble in your life by listening when they're speaking softly to you at first because that's how they speak they speak softly at first and if you don't catch on to what they're trying to tell you they're going to keep talking and they're going to go louder and louder and louder and louder until it becomes so uncomfortable you have to pay attention so why would it get why do you make it have to get so uncomfortable that for you to pay attention that you know i don't know I don't know. That just, uh, it's not my, my cup of tea. <laughs> anyway, it's an interesting thing to do. Um, so yeah, try that. Maybe start a journal. If you've ever done anything like that, if you have any stories to tell, tell me about them, leave them in the comments it's for us all to share. Um, it's just fun to hear other people's stories and hear how other people may feel the energy and listen to the energy and experiences they've had with it so yeah um looks like i'm ending up with this at the ending of this painting this um stuff that i'm using right now it's um it leaves texture oh my gosh i'm drawing a blank as to what it felt um 
I'll put it in the in the description when I think about it, and or I'll go look at it before I post this. Um, but yeah, there it is. A lot of different textures. It it was fun. I had really a lot of fun with it, and you can start to see it here in these this video where the different layers with the transparency of them you can see the other layers behind it so it's got a lot of a lot of depth i think with this painting it's kind of more 3d to see more of the different layers and if you put it on too thick or whatever so that it's not as transparent anyway i really like this one those are some of my favorite colors if you haven't noticed the teals and the greens with the purples and the gold it's just something that I love gold I add it to almost everything <laughs> I know some people don't care for gold but it's, it's my cup of tea anyway um, thanks for listening thanks for sharing some time with me and I hope that you got something out of this conversation I know I love to share these thoughts and ideas with you and I um, will be back at some point in a week or so. You guys take care. I love you all so much. Um, leave me a comment. Like and subscribe if you would, please. I appreciate it. Take care. See you next week.